Okay, hello everyone. We're here for our next lesson, lesson 6b, sampling distribution and point estimation of parameter. Uh, the topic are the following, uh, point estimation, sampling distribution, central limit theorem, the general concept of point estimation, the unbiased estimator, the variance of the sample, the standard error, and the mean square error. So this is chapter 6 of our textbook, Applied Statistics and Probability for Engineers, the 6th edition by Montgomery and Roger. Okay, so let's start. When you say point estimation, this one is just an estimation of your population parameter. When you say population parameter, these are the data describing a population. And from the population, you collect a random variables, which we represent x uh, with its subscript. We have n samples. Okay? And these uh, random variables of the sample from the population is called the data of this uh, sample statistics, which represent the mean value as x bar and the variance as s squared. Okay, so the unique distribution for statistics or the sample data is what we call the sampling distribution. Okay, now, so point estimation or a point estimate of uh, the uh, population which we call statistics is the point estimator of the population. An example, for example, we have this a uh, random variable which have a normally distributed with unknown mean. So, the mean na to is for the uh, population. The sample mean, meaning we have collected samples, is a point estimate of the population mean. Though th that is your mu hat, which is an estimate, estimate yan yung may mga hat, is equal to your x bar, which is the sample mean. I'm just erase everything. After the sample has been selected, the numerical value, x bar, is the point estimate of your mean. Thus, thus, if we have the following data for the four samples, we get the average of this, okay, and then average now, which is x bar, and this is the estimate of the mean of the population, which is your x or the statistics average. Okay, now. Ano yung mga parameters, which is for the population, and ano yung uh, equivalent niya on the statistics, or an estimation of the population parameter. For the mean value, so the parameter is mu, the statistics is x bar, so x bar. Okay? For the variance, we have uh, sigma squared, so the variance is just s squared for the statistics. For the parameter, standard deviation, it's sigma. And uh, for the statistics, is just your S, or the square root of your variance. For proportion of a single population, this is P for the parameter. And uh, usually capital P. You can use capital P for the proportion. And P hat, or small p, for the statistics. For difference between two mean naman, we have uh, mu1 minus mu2, which is equal to x bar 1 minus x bar 2. Well, for the difference in the proportion, we have uh, p1 minus p2 is, uh, ang estimation niya sa statistics is p hat 1 minus p hat 2. There could be choices of point estimation for parameters. Meron din ratio ng Variance. You can have the ratio of uh, sigma 1 over sigma squared 2. This is just the same as S1 squared and over S2 squared. So it's an estimation. Now, so you can estimate uh, population mean by sample mean, sample mean then, or the average of the largest and smallest observation. But basically, we utilize this one as an estimation of the mean. Take note, this is a central value. Okay, so some definitions. So a random variable, x1 to n, xn, 
a random sample of size n. The xi's are independent random variables. Every xi has the same probability distribution. The a statistic is any function of the observation in a random sample, while the probability distribution of the statistics is called the sampling distribution. Okay, so let's have the central limit theorem. If we have x1, x2 to xn is a random sample of uh, size n. So we have size n taken from a population with a mean value of mu and a variance of sigma squared, which is finite value. And your x bar is the sample. Then the limiting form of the distribution follow the uh, standard normal distribution with z equals to x bar minus mu over sigma over square root na n. So basically this is the same. Pareho lang siya nung standard normal distribution natin na x minus mu over Sigma. Kaya lang dito, because this is for samples or statistics, kaya kailangan natin kunin yung sigma over square root ng n. Well, this one is for the entire population. And take note, as n approaches infinity, this one follows a standard normal distribution. Okay? So, let's have some examples. So, if we have the Log normal distribution, which follows a theta 2 and an, uh, w equals 0.75. So, ito yung distribution niya. So, the distribution or the proportion follows the area under the curve. So, basically, ano yung gagawin? We draw 20 samples at random with a distribution size of 10. So, meaning, at any point in time, we will collect uh, values from there. At 20 times nating gagawin for 10 samples. And from here, we collected 10 samples for each sampling point. So we have 20. And we get the mean value. Natin yung mean value. And you can observe from that mean value na uh, this are random. Kasi hindi pare-pareho yung values. So malaki yung, yung difference. Eh. So randomized. Okay, now. But based sa central limit theorem, if you plot the something average and the proportion on how or the probability of how many times it could appear from 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 the data it will uh, fall into a straight line in a scattered data okay then this one provide that uh, evidence that the distribution of the sample mean is normal even though the distribution of the population is very non normal Meaning, uh, in in sampling distribution, it will always follow a normal distribution uh, pattern. Even though if, if the actual population does not follow a uh, normal distribution because of the central limit theorem. Okay, oh, another example is the throwing of dice. So, if we have a dice, so meaning six side cube, and if we throw a die, the probability of uh, having a value of 1 to 6 is the same. So, 1 over 6. So, that's the normal uh, uniform uh, distribution. Uniform distribution. However, if we increase the number of the die and we throw uh, it, we throw tayo, we cast tayo, then the distribution of the die at that follows a normal distribution which the center value or the average value will fall at 3.5 and the probability of having 3 and 4 is highest as compared to 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. So as you can see, this one is a different distribution. Yung isa -isa na. But because of the sampling that we do, uh, for this one, from discrete nagiging normal continuous. So, central limit theorem is the underlying reason why many of the random variable encountered in engineering and science are normally distributed. The observed variable of the result from a series of underlying disturbance will act together to create the central limit effect. 
meaning it will fall to a mean value and a specific standard deviation. Okay? Let's have this one. So, I'll show you some video sa YouTube. I'll show you some video from YouTube uh, about the Dalton board for demonstration of the random. Right, so this uh, is a Galton board uh, because the first person to make one of these and uh, name it after themselves was called uh, Galton. And what you do is you take a ball, you drop it into the top, and it bounces off all these nails before eventually going into one of these categories. Uh, and when the ball hits each nail, in theory, there is a 50-50 chance of it going left or right. And so each path is pretty much unpredictable. If I was to take uh, two balls and put them in, uh, even if I try and put them in exactly the same, they will end up in completely different positions. We cannot accurately predict where any given ball will go. However, we can make a few statements. We can say that a ball uh, is more likely to end up than in the middle than the edge. Because the center categories, there are lots of different paths that end up here. There are only a few paths that end up on the edge. So what we can do is take this piece of scientific equipment, uh, attach it to the top, and start putting these in by the handful. If we put in absolutely loads of these balls, even though each individual one, we couldn't accurately predict where it's going to end up, we can accurately predict the overall pattern from lots of them. Right, and that pattern we end up with is called uh, the normal distribution. In fact, we've got a few too many in the middle there. Uh, you, now, a lot of things in nature follow this pattern. Uh, if you measure people's height, they will follow a normal distribution. Shoe sizes, uh, a lot of things in science and uh, engineering and maths match this kind of bell-shaped curve. Uh, in fact, uh, those of you, if you've done A-level maths, you will know that because the ball has choices of going left or right on each one, this is actually a binomial distribution. And if you have lots and lots of balls going down, as you get more and more of them, it gets closer and closer to exactly matching the normal distribution. So there you are. In probability, you can't predict the exact location one ball will end up, but you can say a lot about what will happen across many balls. Okay, I have another video for the golden ball. But you can see here that uh, several attempts of uh, dropping and calling it in, in the uh, pattern, Nikita nyo na it always follow the bell shape at any given uh, sample or attempt. As you can see kanina doon sa dalawang video na pinakita ko yung uh, the first one which explained kung ano yung uh, pattern ng Dalton ball at yung pangalawa is yung several attempts of doing the, the experiment. It will always follow the bell shape curve or the sample. Okay, so we'll end here and do the example later.